Hello and welcome to MCC Second Season TV International Show. My name is John Dabit and I'm the Business Department Coordinator and also I'm the host for this show. Uh, today's show is about another country in Central West part of the continent of Africa. Uh, the country is the Cameroon and the, our international student here at MCC uh, he is from that country. He will be here with us for a year. He is involved with the ag program here. And of course, he will talk more about this program and why he decided to be in the ag program here at MCC. Uh, please uh, allow me to welcome our international student from Cameroon, John Paul Ambizi. Uh, welcome, John. Thank you, John. How are you today? I'm doing great. Good thank to you. have you with us today. The pleasure is mine to, to have you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, John, we're going to start with you know a very simple traditional question. Can you tell us more about Cameroon, please? Well, Cameroon, as you already said, is uh, situated in the central west Africa, in the continent of Africa, the, the Gulf of Guinea. Cameroon has a surface area of about uh, 4,047 square kilometers, about 1,085 square miles, has a population of about 20 million people. It's made up of 10 regions, and uh, it is named and known as Africa in miniature because of its diversity in culture mm -hmm. and the peace that reigns in Cameroon for over 50 years after independence. And, and you are talking about diversity, and I hear from you uh, telling me that you have uh, more than, I think, 200 languages or something like that there. So can you tell us something about that, please? Yeah, we have uh, over 270 uh, ethnic groups and local languages. Oh, than uh, in the 10 different regions of Cameroon, as I really said that Cameroon is like Africa in miniature. It is one of the highest country in Africa and the world that has this diversity. And the diversity cuts across culture, the dressing, the food, the music. And the bottom line of this diversity is that there is harmony and peace that reigns despite this diversity. So I know you speak English and I know you are fluent in French. Yes. Uh, how many other languages do you speak? I speak about nine different languages and nine write different about, languages. Uh, about five. Okay. Do you mind if I ask you to say something in one of your native languages, maybe a sentence or two, yes. so, and then translate that into English, please? Ma benea John Dabida Kazazungwa na enukwe as a tumokene in Nara Dasni Nyabi Cameroon Amu Akum. Uh this is the Ingi language, my uh, native language. I just said thank you, John Dabid, for the opportunity you have given me to come and talk and share my culture, talk about Cameroon where I am from. My pleasure, John. Yeah. Thank My you. pleasure. Thank okay, John, uh, you know, I'm, I'm looking at your uh, custom here, your traditional custom here, and I see, you know, different colors from orange to yellow to green. And I, I, I see, you know, different things that you are carrying with you or wearing. Can you tell us something about that? Yeah, the dress I have on is really one of those symbolic uh, dresses, which is... Uh, as I said, the diversity that reigns in Cameroon and, the, uh, and uh, in the very region. This is a typical grass field uh, where the region where I come from, the northwest region of Cameroon. And the designs are based on your choice. So I had the design for myself which had to represent the various colors that make up my national flag, the red, the green, and the yellow. So that is why you have to see these uh, uh, symbolic designs and color. Okay, tell me more about the necklace that you are wearing. Well, the necklace which I wear, this is uh, another sign of uh, authority uh -huh. because this is worn by uh, symbol of authority by traditional rulers. And it, it represents this, uh, what you can see here, it's supposed to re represent a sign of uh, the horn, which is sign of authority I have wanted to show you. So this is supposed to be 
another one of those uh, artifacts of authority. So okay, so so what do you do with this? I mean, you just drink in it. Yeah, or? this is you use it to drink in it, uh, in a customary way. If uh, when a tradition, somebody has to give you a blessing, give you uh, if you have to share from a cup this wine, then you are blessed. Wow, so that's a sign of having been blessed by someone in authority. Wow, and I see that you carry also like a bag with you here. Mm -hmm. So if we can bring that into the camera and also talk a little bit about that bag. Yeah, this bag happens to be one of those uh, attires that make up the dress complete. So you have a variety of designs. So this one specifically I had it made and designed knowing that I was leaving Cameroon for the United States far away from home. So I had to carry the message across to all the people that the people of Cameroon join their voices with mine to say, we greet you all. And I say, I greet everybody in Iowa, Muscatine and the United States. And we are really blessed to have you here also. And we are very happy to have you here at MCC. I mean, you, you and the other international students add, adds a lot really to the color of MCC as a college here, really, and we are very happy to have you. Uh, John, Paul, uh, tell me something about your traditions and cultures. Well, my tradition and culture, like from the grassland field of Cameroon, where I come from, uh, if I have to take, for example, uh, like uh, death ceremonies or birth ceremony or birth or baby showers, mm -hmm. yeah, when a uh, when a, a newborn comes into family, there is a specific day that is laid aside for the baby shower occasion. So during those days, traditional dishes are prepared. We have a dish like a chew, um, uh, uh, plantain, and pork, and beef are those symbolic and traditional uh, 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 component of a dish. If these are absent, then the whole idea of the baby shower of a, or celebrating the occasion has been defeated. So, so, so what you are saying that almost each event will have like certain kind of food that goes with it? Each event has almost all the, f the, the, the traditional dishes that go along with it, but it depends because there is a variety. It depends what you like to have, you will have it there. So okay. you feel more at home choosing which dish you feel more comfortable having and eating. Okay. And, and, and for example, let's say you, you talk about food. Uh, Anything in Cameroon that can be compared to any of the food that we have here in the United States, or it's totally different? Well, not quite totally. You know, uh, <clears throat> like grains, rice is a global, uh, is yeah. a global food. So, but what you do with rice might be different, right? Well, what we do, yeah, because rice is served in several ways. You have uh, rice is served with sauce, maybe um, a peanut sauce or granite uh, soup sauce. You have rice, which is, uh, um, we have it, call it jello rice. Uh -huh. So you have it in several forms. You can have rice, which is served as a, uh, in, the, in the northern region of Cameroon, they have to grind it as flour to make a, um, uh, they call it fufu, or in French, couscous. So, okay, wow. Yeah. Wow, I'm, I'm glad. And do you do you try to make some of this food here? Yeah, I, I, mean? I do. We all, I was preparing in the apartment, and when I moved over here, I was fortunate to have some of this stuff with me. So uh -huh. my friends in the apartment and the international student happened to enjoy it, and they really, really appreciate it. Well, I'm, I'm glad to hear that. I'm glad to know that. Uh, well, uh, John, in a little bit, uh, our producer and director, Chad Bishop, will start rolling some pictures on the screen yes. about Cameroon. Yes. So uh, <coughs> if you are kind enough also to share with us some information about each picture that we're going to see okay. on, on the screen, that would be great to share with our audience. Yeah. And here we see like the first one. The, the first one, this is, as I said, this is my national flag, the green, the red, and the yellow. The green being a symbol representing the green vegetation of Cameroon agriculture, especially the forests of the south. Then the red stands for 
uh, sign of independence, commemorating those who lost their lives during the struggle for independence of Cameroon. And the yellow is a sign of hope, that there is hope in Cameroon. Wow, uh, wow, that's very nice. And there is uh, the map of Cameroon, uh, the various colors come up together to make up the 10 regions that make up Cameroon, starting from the north, right down to the south, then to the east, and to the west. So, so which part did you come from in Cameroon? Which I come from the northwest part of Cameroon, which is uh, and headquartered by Bamenda, which is neighbored by Nigeria to the west. Okay, okay, good. And there is a, uh, another uh, very symbolic monument, the reunification monument. It might interest you to know that the, the, uh, the country we call today the Republic of Cameroon happens to be two independent states. The former French Cameroon or East Cameroon got its independence on the 1st of January in 1960. Then the West Cameroon, where I come from, uh, the formerly known the Southern Cameroon got its independence on the 1st of October 1961. So the two nations became one in, uh, in 1961. So that is a mu monument symbolizes the day the two nations combined and they formed the country we know today as the and, Republic. And, of and where is that monument in the, like what place, what city? The monument is found in the nation capital of Cameroon, Yaoundé. Okay, yeah. okay. Wow, that's really nice. There is a coat of arms of Cameroon having all the colors, the green, the red, and the yellow, and the uh, 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 star, the gold star in the red. You have the fasces uh, behind which shows a uh, sign of authority. Then you have the scale, and the map of Cameroon, the scale representing the judiciary justice that reigns in Cameroon. And you can see the bilingual nature of it there, uh, the, the, the representation in French, Republic du Cameroon, then the English translation, Republic of Cameroon. So, and all we have the motto of Cameroon, uh, pay, travail, patrie, peace, work, fatherland. That is the motto. Okay, okay. as we are talking about this, uh, let me just ask you a quick question. What will be the most common language that you use to communicate with each other? You said you have more than 270 languages. So, yes. so what will be, is it French, English, or? Well, I would say it depends which part of the country you find yourself in, because French and English are the official languages. So those are okay. the language of administration. If you happen to find yourself in an area where the people, like the north and western part of Cameroon, which is a, form, a former British uh, trust territory, uh -huh. Mostly English will be spoken, will but be. French too is spoken, but to a lesser degree. But there is an administrative language. Oh. It's used in education. We learned it, and oh. we are proud to uh, know those languages. Thank you. Thanks for sharing this also with us. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, what do we see now? Yeah, there is um, a part view of uh, the nation capital Yaoundé. You can see some administrative buildings, the prime ministry office. Um, who happens to be the head of government and some other uh, nice scene of the central town of Yaoundé. Mm. Wow. Yeah, there's, there's uh, the president, the head of state of Cameroon, President Paul Bia in a, in a black suit. And with the leading opposition party leader, Nijon Frundi, this picture was recently taken uh, while I was here. Uh, they had a, the head of state visited my my hometown, Bamenda, during the 50th anniversary commemoration of the armed forces in Cameroon. So that is a sign of hope, peace in Cameroon. The two opposing camps happen to come together and they love the nation Cameroon and they are planning for Which good, is great. Which is yeah. great and yeah. we admire yeah. that. Yeah. And it will be interesting to know that this is a very symbolic year in Cameroon. We are celebrating 50 years of independence and this is an election year in Cameroon. This will be a special year for you, a right? A very special yeah. year for me. That's good. Yeah, uh, you can see that there is a um, one of those ceremonies I spoke of, you see the people dressed, well, that is in the northwestern part of Cameroon. So they are dressed in their traditional outfit for one of the traditional ceremonies. I can't say which one specifically, but I guess it would have been like a death celebration. Mm -hmm. 
And, and, and do they wear stuff like that on a daily basis or just during the uh, ceremonies and special events? These are uh, ceremonial wears. You wear them occasionally. Okay. Yes. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah, this is um, around the, the, the beach, the uh, beach of Limbe in the southwestern part of Cameroon. Well, this is a nice place for uh, tourists, for um, sightseeing. Mm -hmm. I will invite you, John David, an inner international person, any tourist, please, when you come to Cameroon, do not fail to visit this, because this happens to be the area of the North uh, Atlantic Ocean of Cameroon, and Cameroon happens to be uh, blessed we, uh, to be around the coastal area. We serve many in uh, uh, landlocked countries like Chad. They don't have a, uh, a, a seaport, so their goods come in through the one of these ports. We have about three seaports in Cameroon. Uh, you, you see, Jean Paul, I, I, I think as you said this, I'm, I'm just thinking about that because you know I visited Northern Africa, I visited. South, the southern south part south of Africa, Africa, South Africa, yeah. and now I think I need to go somewhere in, in, in that area, in the middle area of the central Africa, and I'm hoping one day, and hopefully soon, I, I will get the chance to come and visit your country. It looks really nice. Yeah, I mean, really nice. I will tell you, you won't regret it. You yeah. are going to see, as I said, Africa in miniature. What you have seen in the south, what you have seen in the north, you will find in Cameroon. Beautiful, beautiful, yes. beautiful. Yeah, that is a forest area, the southern part. Uh, interesting to note too, the, this forest happens to be part of the second world, uh, largest uh, forest reserve in the world, the Congo Basin Forest, after the Amazon in Central Africa. So this is a great uh, concern area. There's a lot of international interest there, especially at this time of the year, uh, at this time of the globe, where the international community is concerned about the climate change and global warming. So there's a biodiversity, wildlife, and great conservation of species. Beautiful, beautiful. Oh, another interesting site that happens to be Mount Cameroon. That is the highest mountain in West Africa and the third highest mountain in Africa. It is about 14,000 feet. So starting at any part, in the southwest region of Cameroon, in Boya, you happen to see it. Interesting too to know that this mountain serves as an international event place during the month of February. Recently, this recently the month of February passed. There was uh, like usual the international Mount Cameroon race. So mm -hmm. it's only during this time of the year that you can really have a nice view of the mountain because. After this period of the year, <coughs> it is cloudy and it is known that this is the only spot in Cameroon that there exists snow. Perfect. Now wow, look at that. The green scenery and happens to be a very, very special one because this is a cash crop in Cameroon, cocoa, uh, uh, coffee, sorry, alongside um, other cash crops, coffee, cocoa, plant, uh, planting, um, timber, and uh, palm trees. So this is one of the uh, Cameroon tea estate uh, uh, coffee, uh, co um, coffee, coffee plantations. And, and, and you have plantations like that all over or we, in certain parts of the We country? have in uh, uh, certain regions, the southwest region of Cameroon and mm -hmm. the northwest region of Cameroon because this happens to be one of the largest tea plantations in the whole of West Africa. Wow, wow. Yeah. Wow, I feel very, very delighted seeing this. This is a symbolic uh, picture. This is a representation of what Cameroon has been during the f past 50 years, which we are currently commemorating. This logo was specially designed to indicate and show that the two hands showing that Cameroonians love themselves, they love peace, they love unity. And the sign of the dove carrying um, a, a plan shows that peace, Cameroonian one, and Cameroon happens to be a peace-loving country serving as a base of most international organization. Most international concern is in Cameroon because it is through Cameroon that they can get into the other trouble regions of 
Africa in the sub and west, Af uh, the central and west African region. Yeah, you know what, uh, John Paul, I mean, I'm really intrigued by, you know, everything you shared with us today. I mean, it's really, you can tell, even though you said you just got, you, you know, you're independent and you're celebrating 50 years. But it, it looks to me that you have really a very rich culture. So thank you for sharing that with us. And I'm hoping that our audience uh, had really great time watching the pictures and at the same time also listening to your description of each picture. So many thanks for sharing this, the, this cultural, I would say, information and traditional information and information about co your country, of course, w with us. So many thanks. And I'm, you know, as I mentioned before, I'm very glad to have you on, on this show. Now, what I want to do is, uh, why Muscatine? I mean, y you know, you are here at MCC now, you are an international student, you are doing, you know, working on a certain degree. A and why did you come to Muscatine? I mean, is there a reason? Well, that is an interesting uh, question. Um, to begin with, I am an uh, international student who said on an exchange program, I thanks to the Education and Cultural Affairs section of the U.S. Embassy in Cameroon. There was uh, the scholarship uh, launch through the U.S. Embassy in Cameroon. I happened to apply for it alongside many other Cameroonians. And, uh, in the course of applying, I indicated my interest that I'm interested in agriculture, livestock, and crop production. So the Education and Cultural Affairs Section and the U.S. Department of State, they work in partnership with the U.S.-based consortia, CCID, which uh, happened to receive my application and work in partnership with many community colleges, they knew that agriculture, when it refers to agriculture, Muscatin and Muscatin Community College is the best place for agriculture. So they chose this place for me and I happened to find myself here and I don't regret it any second for having been sent here thanks to CCID. And I appreciate the time I've spent here in Muscatin. I enjoy the agricultural program. It has been really, really great. I do and I heartily appreciate everybody in Muscatine and every person on the college campus that has been and continued to make me succeed and learn so much within the short time that I have been here. We are pleased to hear that from you. I mean, that's definitely a great uh, statement that we are hearing. And we are proud of, you know, uh, serving our students, whether they are from Iowa or from out of state or even an international students. I'm sure we do have and we can be very proud of, you know, this agricultural program that we have here at MCC. And that's definitely due to the hard work of the ag coordinator, my, my best friend, you know, Marshall McDonald, and also the instructors in that department. So I'm very, very happy to hear that. Yeah, and, and hopefully you will get all this information that you are learning here with you. And that's what I assume back home to your country and also implement that and help whoever needs that help in your own country. And I'm very happy to hear that. Uh, well, John Paul, uh, question. I mean, what do you do in your free time? Well, my free time, interesting too. What I do during my free time, besides studying and having other children, I get myself involved in the community, in volunteering, and getting to know much about the community, and getting to be more involved in helping, because there is no best thing to do in life rather than helping people in whatever way they need help. So I get myself involved in the community. I do voluntary work in downtown Muscatine. Uh, recently I was with uh, Mulberry during the carnival um, end of uh, year activities. Uh, on campus too, I'm involved. I, uh, through the PTK, I get involved and I assist Nancy, the librarian, in trying to get the uh, archives of the school set in order. So there's so many. And I have, the, uh, through my uh, project coordinator, Jennifer, we happen to have, uh, to explore more of America, have fun. So, so that I am not so much based on studies alone, but I have, I have to explore and know so much 
within the time that I have to be here so that when I go home, I could be able to share the knowledge to with people. And I happen to be sharing my own culture through, this is one of the venues which I happen to share my cultures and I will continue to share my culture so that people get to know about Cameroon, what it is in Cameroon, and people in Cameroon, when I get back home, they'll get to know what is in the US. So. So, so mainly you have no free time based on that. You are involved in downtown, you are involved here at the college. I mean, that's great. That's a great uh, learning experience because, you know, we always learn also uh, by dealing with other people. And, and the best way to, uh, to share your culture with, with, with us is by simply communicating with us and by working with us. That's a great way to learn about us and we learn about you. I mean, I really, really uh, appreciate everything that you are doing here on campus and outside campus. So overall, you are very pleased and you are very happy that you are in Muscatine. I'm very pleased. I'm very happy that I'm here in Muscatine. I don't know if I was not in Muscatine what I would have said because it happens as if they read my mind. They brought me here and everything has been so lovely. The people are very cooperative, very helpful because they would never like to see me uh, maybe feel the least moment of like being homesick. I might tell you, everybody's so concerned. They ask, how am I feeling? Knowing that I'm far from home, they do all they can and they always keep me feel more at home, I do appreciate it. I don't know how much I can appreciate them, but I have to say I thank them very much for their um, cordiality, the friendship. I will never forget any moment that I've shared with the community of Muscatine, the community on college, and the people that I come across in the other parts of the US that I've been to. I'm happy to hear that. Well, John Paul, uh, I want to give you a minute and in this minute, you can say whatever you want to say. So uh, that's your minute. <laughs> well, what I would like to say, I want more. Thank my US embassy in Cameroon through the Education and Cultural Affairs section for having selected me as one of the 12 who moved over here for this uh, one year of uh, exchange study. It has been a great opportunity and it has helped to open many doors for me. I will never regret this, and I don't know how I shall ever pay them back. The only thing I would tell them is thank you very much for having given me these opportunities. It has opened many doors for me, and I appreciate everybody who has and who continue to assist me in helping me to realize more and develop more of my talents and my skills. So I say thank you all for everything you have and continue to do for me. It has been a great time spent with you all. Yeah. And you know what, John Paul, thank you for allowing me to host you on my show. Uh, and thank you for all the information uh, that you shared with us and with the audience here uh, in Muscatine. Uh, you know, as I always say, every show is different because in every show we are learning more and more about cultures, traditions, and other things in one country or some countries around the globe. So that's the goal and that's the objective of this show is simply to learn more and more about countries from all over the world. Traditions and cultures and languages and people and, and, and. So many thanks for being with me today. And as I always say, if you have any question and or comments, please call me at 288-6064, or you can email me at jdebate at eicc.edu. Till next time, Muscatine, bye-bye. <laughs>